Hi, my name's Noah, welcome to the Art Studio, and I'm going to be your instructor for this one hour beginner's Hatha yoga class. If you haven't done any yoga before, don't panic. I always get people coming to me saying, I'd really like to try your class, but I'm not very flexible. This is a beginner's class. If you've never done it before, this is perfect for you. I am going to be using some equipment throughout this class. I have a block and two bricks. If you don't have any equipment of your own available, don't worry. Remember, you can always use things in your surroundings, like seat cushions, sturdy books, even a box that you've taped back together to give yourself something to prop you up a little bit if you need it. Um, there's not going to be any music playing in the background of this class, but if you would like some music, check out the link in the description below to my Spotify playlist, where you'll be able to find something that you can listen along to. So if you're ready to go, let's get on the mat. We're going to begin today's class with an initial relaxation. So I'd like you to come the whole way down onto the mat and we're going to get into Shavasana. So what I normally like to do to get people into this pose correctly is to tell them to lie down the mat like a long dart. So take your hands, put them on either side of your hips or your thighs, bring your feet together and lie down on the mat, long and straight, tense everything up and then relax to the side. So you wanna have your feet and your legs completely relaxed, your hands and your arms completely relaxed, and then let your head completely rest on the mat. So just take a moment in this position, close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do so, and just try and identify any tension in the body that you're still holding on to. So it's very common for your shoulders to remain tight in this position. And if you want, just give them a little wiggle, roll them around a bit until you find a comfortable position where you can lie on the mat without putting any effort into staying there. Start breathing nice and deep in through the nose and out through the nose. And when you want to breathe in, focus not on breathing into the chest, but all the way down into the abdomen. So I want you to start breathing as deep as you can. As you lie here and you start to enter this moment of stillness, you're probably going to find that thoughts start coming into your head, little distractions, other things that you have going on later today, things that you feel like you might need to get on with. It's very common we hear people talking about meditation and yoga, the process of clearing your mind. I don't want you to try and clear your mind. I just want you to take notice of the things that come into your head. If you like, you can imagine you're in a boat and you're just drifting down a river and those thoughts are like trees on the riverbank. So just let them come into your mind and then just notice them as they pass you. Breathing deep. I want you to try and feel a wave of breath entering the body down into the abdomen, up into the chest, until the breath fills all the way up to your collarbones and then as you exhale, from the collarbones, the chest, all the way down into the abdomen. drifting down that river, any thoughts that enter your mind, any emotions, just let them drift past. It's 
the general intention of your mind that it wants to keep you aware of the now. But the way it does that is by trying to distract you, trying to make you aware of anything that it perceives as a potential threat. So if you have outstanding tasks, things that you're concerned about, your mind will try to bring those to the forefront of your attention right now because you're trying to take this moment of stillness. So this isn't about clearing your mind. This is simply about becoming aware of what your mind is trying to think about. Just take notice of it and let it drift past you. going to move into a supine mobilization. On your next inhale, I'd just like you to lift your arms up away from the ground and overhead. And then as you exhale, let the arms drift down back towards your hips. And on every inhale, sweep the arms up and over. And then as you exhale, the way down. You can take this as quickly or as slowly as you like. Just make sure you're breathing as deep as you can and the motion of your arms is just mirroring your breath. On your next inhale, sweep the arms up and over again. But then as you exhale, you're going to lift your right knee up towards your chest and your arms will come down. And you can grab hold either of the shin or behind the thigh, whatever feels comfortable. Take a moment here to breathe and just gently flex and point the toes. And this isn't an aggressive motion. We're not trying to force them to the fullest range of motion. Just gently moving the ankle as far as it feels comfortable to go. And then on your next inhale, you're going to release the shin, reach the arms up and over. And as you exhale, now the left knee will come in towards the chest. Again, just gently flexing and pointing the toes. Keep breathing in through the nose as deep as you can. Exhaling through the nose until you feel all of the air leaving your body and you're ready for the next inhale. As we inhale, release the shin again, reach up and overhead. And now as we exhale, bring the right leg up and we're going to hold behind the thigh, bringing the toes all the way up towards the ceiling. Breathe deep. And now we're just going to gently circle or roll the ankle. Circle it a couple of times in one direction and then change directions. Maybe do some little figure eights. And then on your next inhale, release the leg, reaching the arms up and overhead. Exhale, left leg. circling the foot again, one way or the other. And on your next inhale, release. Now as we exhale, both knees will come in towards the chest and we'll come into Apanasana and just find a little rock from side to side. 
forwards and backwards. Maybe circle the knees. We're going to gently increase the rock until you naturally fall on one side or the other. If you're pregnant or if you have high blood pressure issues, I would like you to roll onto the left, but otherwise roll onto whichever side feels comfortable. And once you're in that position, just take a couple of breaths, relax, and then in your own time, I just want you to gradually make your way up into a seated position. So find a seat in the centre of the mat. Depending on your level of ability and level of comfort today, you can sit in whatever position feels comfortable for you. So, Sukhasana, Siddhasana, or if you're feeling very yogic, you can even come into a half lotus or a full lotus. But I'm just going to sit with my legs crossed. Bring your hands out to the side, sit nice and tall. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here, and then when you're ready, we're going to, on an inhale, lift our right hand up and come over. Breathe into the side of the rib cage here. And then again, on an inhale, up and down. Inhale, other hand goes up and over. Take a moment expanding the rib cage. And then on an inhale, up and down. Bring one hand out to the front of the body. As we inhale, we're going to lift and then rotate the body around to look over towards the wall to the side of us. Again. Nice deep breaths here, and then on an inhale, sit nice and tall, come back to the centre as we exhale. Swap the hands over, inhale, lift, exhale, rotate. Inhale, lift, exhale to the centre. Bring both hands out in front of you, inhale, sit tall, and as we exhale, I just want you to fold down as far as feels comfortable and just let the head hang heavy. And then when you're ready, inhale, sit nice and tall again. Place your hands behind you. And on an exhale, just come up, opening the chest, looking up towards the ceiling. center and then we're going to go through that whole sequence again but we're going to go a little deeper so sitting nice and tall we're going to come up and over as if you want to reach your fingertips down towards the mat and then up and down switching arms feel comfortable to do so, you can bring the front hand onto the knee just to help you go a little bit further and we're going to try and look towards the wall behind us. Inhale, sit tall, the centre, switch it over, inhale, sit tall and rotate. Inhale, sit tall to the centre, and then we're going to inhale, and as we exhale, fold forwards again, reaching our arms out. Come 
come back up to the centre. Bring our hands behind us. Open out the chest. And if it feels comfortable, come up onto the knees. Lifting the hips up towards the ceiling. If that's too much, just stay in a seated position. Lower it back down. And then we're going to come over into an all fours position for a cat cow sequence. So your hands will be underneath your shoulders, shoulders width apart. Your knees will be underneath your hips, a hips distance apart. Your toes will be untucked. If you're on a firm floor and it's uncomfortable, then you can just put a fold in the mat and that gives you a little bit of extra padding on your knees. We're going to inhale, come up into cow, lifting the tail and the head, exhale, lift the back, into cow. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Once more. Come into a cow position, then tuck the toes. We're going to lift the knees off into a quarter dog. And then as we inhale, untuck the toes, cow, retuck the toes, exhale, half dog, bringing the chest towards the knees, inhale, untuck the toes, cow, exhale, retuck the toes, and we're going to come all the way up into a full downwards dog. Moving the feet as necessary. Adho Mukha Sanasana. You can pedal out the feet here if you wish. Move the hips from side to side. Nice deep breaths. And then when you're ready, you're either going to walk your feet towards your hands or your hands towards your feet. And then once you're there, take a nice deep inhale. Come all the way up to Tadasana, Mountain Pose. So if you put a fold in your mat, you can take that back out now. We're going to do our sun salutations now. We're going to start with a modified version. I'll walk you through one round, so that both sides of the modified. And then we're going to do two rounds of the fold. So we're going to start into Dasana. We're going to inhale, opening the chest, exhale, walking the hands down the feet. Inhale, you're going to step your right foot back into a lunge, then exhale. We're going to bring the knees together and come down into a box position lowering onto the ground. Put your hands by your shoulders. Inhale, come up into a little baby cobra. And then exhale, push back into a child's pose. Inhale, right foot comes forwards. And then exhale, step together. Inhale, back up to Tadasana. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, lower it down. Walking the hands down towards the mat. Inhale, left foot steps back. Lunge. And then we're going to come back into a box position. Lower it down as we exhale. Hands by the sides. Inhale, come up. And then exhale, push back into an extended child's pose. Inhale, left foot steps forwards. Lunge. Exhale, stepping up. Walk the hand 
comes back up. Inhaling, mountain pose. So if that's feeling good for you, stick with that version. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the full sun salutation. So starting in Tadasana, inhale, reach overhead. Exhale, forwards fold. Inhale, right foot, lunge, place the knee down, untuck the toes. Retain the breath, retuck the toes, step back into plank. Exhale, knees, chin and chest come down to the mat. Untuck the toes as we inhale, up into cobra. Retuck the toes, exhale, down dog. Inhale, right foot steps up, lunge, retuck the toes, step together. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead, exhale, hands come together. Inhale, exhale, inhale, left foot, retain the breath. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. You should be starting to feel a little bit warm now. This is going to be the last round. If you're still feeling a little bit cold, feel free to pause the video and do another round or two until you feel warm. Uttanasana. Hasta Uttanasana. Ashwa Sanchalanasana. Kumbhakasana. Ashtanga Namaskar. Ujjangasana, Adho Mukha Shvanasana, Ashvasanchalanasana. Hasta Uttanasana, sorry, Uttanasana. Hasta Uttanasana, and bring the hands together. Last time. So at this point, you should be starting to feel quite warm. And we're going to come into our first posture of the day, which is just going to be Shri. We're gonna bring our feet together and our hands by our sides into Tadasana, Mountain Pose. For our prep, all I want you to do is inhale, bring one foot to the side, and draw it up onto the calf. We're going to hold this and breathe. Focus on opening the chest. If you like, you can bring the hands up to the center. And if you feel comfortable and you'd like to challenge your balance a little, you can close your eyes. Standing tall, keep breathing deep. And on your next exhale, we're just going to slide the foot down the leg and then bring it back into the center. And then inhale, other foot comes round, slide it up. And if you're struggling with this, 
you can have your toes down on the mat to give yourself a little bit of extra support. Also, if you have anything around you that you can hold on to to give yourself a little bit of extra balance, feel free to do so. So keep breathing. Slide the foot down and back to the center. Then we're going to come back to the first leg. We're going to take a little bit further. Again, if all you can manage today is just bringing your toes up to the arch of the foot, and that's fine. But if you can, you're going to bring your foot the whole way up or alternatively to the calf. Whatever feels good for you today. And then again, if you can, we're going to lift our arms up and reach up towards the sky. If you'd like to take it further still and your balance is there, you can look up towards the ceiling. And if you lose your balance at any point, don't get frustrated. Just return to Tadasana get yourself back in position. Make sure your foot is either on your calf or on the inside of your thigh. Don't put it on your knee because that'll be uncomfortable. And I want you to keep on focusing on that deep breathing. Really open the chest. Expand the abdomen and then lower the arms down, release the foot, bring it back to the center, other foot comes out, slide it up the leg and then lift the arms up. Ooh. Again, if your balance is there, look up towards the ceiling. I'm not feeling as good on my left side today as I am on my right. down, slide the foot down onto the mat and return to mountain pose. So step to the head or the foot of the mat or just stay where you are, it doesn't really matter that much. And we're going to do a rotated or twisting chair, uh, Parabrita Utkatasana. So what we're going to do is from Tadasana, Inhale, and as we exhale, we're going to walk the hands down towards the knees, hinging forwards. Bend the knees as if you want to sit down into a chair. Bring the hands together, and then we're going to rotate. You're going to place your left elbow on the outside of the right knee, or your right elbow on the outside of the left knee, depending on which way you went. And we're going to look across at the wall to the side of us. If you're struggling to get this far, then you can use your hands to prop you up and just rotate around as far as you feel comfortable. You also don't need to come this low. If you want, you can come higher up, so it's as much, the, as much of a bend as you can manage. But if you can come the whole way down and the whole way around, that's great. Focus on that deep breathing. And try
try and keep your back as flat as you can. And then we're going to release and back to the center. Come across. Other elbow to the other side. Nice deep breaths. Nice flat back. And release, exhale to the center. Come back to the first side. And you can either go as far as you did before, or if you feel able, release one hand up towards the ceiling, look towards your fingertips, and then this other hand can either stay at the chest, or you can bring it down towards the ankle. together, come back to the centre, switch, knee to elbow, release the hands, deep as you can and bring your hands back together and then back to the center lift it back up now if you have any blocks or anything at all that you can use to help prop your hands up a little bit or give you some support grab them now we're going to do a forward fold or utanasana so I'm going to hold on to my blocks, stand nice and tall, inhale, and then as I exhale, I'm going to roll down until my blocks touch down, and then I'm going to let my head hang nice and heavy. So if you don't have blocks, you can always use a sofa or an armchair, something where you can place your hands on top of them. Maybe you have a low coffee table. You can, of course, also use your legs for support. Try and keep a little bend in the knee. And then when you're ready on an inhale, we're going to come all the way up, nice and slow, into Tadasana. Take a couple of breaths here, open up the chest, and then we're going to go back into our forwards fold, Uttanasana, but we're going to try and go a little bit deeper. So I'm going to work myself the whole way down, and then for me, I'm just going to move my blocks to the next lowest setting. So ideally, you want to be able to place your hands flat down. So if you're in this position, try and find something a little bit taller to support you. And if it feels really tight or uncomfortable on the back of your legs, you can increase the bend just a tiny bit. But you do want to try and keep those legs as straight as possible. Inhale, to shift your weight backwards slightly and roll back up. Into Tadasana, open out the arms and the chest, reach the face up towards the ceiling slightly, and just take a couple of nice deep breaths. 
And then from here we're going to come into a triangle, Vihita Chakanasana. So you may want to have your blocks available for this. I'm just going to leave them around the centre of the mat. We're going to step our feet approximately two to three shoulders widths apart. Your front foot will be facing down the mat. And your rear foot will be at 90 degrees, so they're forming an L shape. You're going to lift your arms up to shoulder height, shift your rib cage across, and then we're going to come down. And you can either use your shin for support, or if you have a block available, you can rest your hand on it. And what I want you to focus on is opening this arm backwards, as if we're being wedged between two walls. back up, bring the rib cage back to the centre, and then we're going to switch the feet around, and we're going to do the opposite, bringing the arms up to shoulder height, shifting the rib cage, and then coming down, again as if we're being wedged between two walls, try and make yourself as flat as you can, and then release. Lift the arms back up and bring the weight central. We're going to switch the feet around again. And if you can, take them a little bit wider. With all of these postures, you're not trying to force the position. Just go as far as you feel comfortable. So bring the arms back up, shift the weight across, and then lower yourself down, reaching the other arm up towards the ceiling. Looking up towards the fingertips, open up the chest. arms up, back to the centre, switch the legs over again, shift the weight across and fold. Both of the feet now can walk back in towards one another. And then we're going to come back down into an all fours position. And we're going to do downward facing dog, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. So I'm going to be using blocks for this one. Um, I'd like to focus on giving my heels as low to the ground as possible. So I'm going to place my blocks at approximately shoulders distance apart. I'm going to place my hips, sorry, my knees underneath my hips, hips distance apart. I'm going to tuck my toes, inhale, and as I exhale, I'm going to lift up and push my he heels down towards the mat. Once you get into this position, try and focus on opening the chest and lowering it towards the mat. 
lifting the hips and keeping the back nice and flat. Keep breathing deep. Obviously, if you can go further into a full downward facing dog with your hands on the mat as well, that's absolutely fine. If you don't have anything to support you, you can place your hands on the mat and just bend the knees slightly to allow you to get into this position. And then we're just going to lower the knees down and we're going to come up into a cow position. Take a couple of breaths here. And then again, we're going to try and advance it slightly. So we're going to try and bring our hands a little closer down towards the mat. We're going to inhale and as we exhale, and deep and ease into the position. My bricks are trying to slide away from me. down, untuck the toes and come back into a cow. So from this position, I'm going to move the blocks to the side, walk my hands down the mat, and we're going to go into a cobra, Bhujangasana, so your hands will be on either side of your shoulders and the legs are going to be about a shoulders, uh, sorry, a hips distance apart. Take a nice deep inhale and as we exhale, we're just going to lift up as far as feels comfortable. So my focus here is on keeping a little bend in my elbows, otherwise my arms are straight. And I'm keeping my chest open and my shoulders relaxed down away from my ears. So I'm not slumping forwards like this. And you'll notice that I can get quite a severe bend in my lower back. If you can't bring your chest up this high, that's fine. We're just going as far as feels comfortable. And then we're going to push back very gently into a child's pose. Take a couple of deep breaths here. And then slide the hands back forwards. And I'm going to lower the hips back down. And on this second time around, we're going to try and go a little bit further. And if it feels comfortable and you want a little bit of a challenge, you can lift the toes up away from the mat and then point them towards our head, coming as far as we can. If this feels uncomfortable or if you get a cramp in your feet or your hamstrings, just release it back and keep the feet on the mat. Onto the heels, 
child's pose. Relax the head down, relax the shoulders. If you'd like, you can bring your hands down by your sides. Push your weight backwards and roll back up to a seated position. If you have any kind of pad or block, then grab that now. We're going to come into our final posture, Dandasana, staff pose. So I'd like you to sit on your block with your legs stretched out in front of you toes gently pointed up towards the ceiling, sitting nice and tall, and then we're just going to reach our hands out in front of us, or down by our sides, we're going to open the chest and hinge forwards. So we're trying to keep our back as straight as possible, we're not folding. This is uncomfortable on your wrists, you can also rotate the hands around. So it's whatever feels good for you. If you have to come very high up off the ground because you have tight hamstrings, obviously you can also use something else to prop your hands up to enable you to lift further. Give your legs a little bit of a wiggle to ease them off. And then we're going to come back into it. And as before, we're going to try and go a little bit further and hinge a little bit further forwards. And if you have a yoga belt or any other kind of strap that you can have around your feet, you might find it more comfortable to have something to hold on to here to pull yourself forwards. Generally, I find when I try and pull myself, my lower back rounds out. So it's much more comfortable for me to push forwards. And then relax it there. Your blocks and your bricks can go to one side. And then we're just going to come down onto the mat, bringing the knees in towards the chest for Apanasana. Give yourself a little hug, roll from side to side, forwards and backwards, do some little circles with the knees. And then we're going to finish as we started by releasing your legs down to the mat and returning to Shavasana, corpse pose. So again, if you find any tension in the body, just release it. Shavasana is often referred to as the most important pose in yoga. The way I like to think of it is everything that we've done up until this point is all of the stages of making a cake. We've put all of the ingredients in the bowl and we've mixed them up and we've poured the batter into the cake tin and now Shavasana is where we put the cake in the oven. This is the time in the session when your mind is probably going to be most active, trying to bring your attention back to everything else that you need to do today. Again, return to that river.
And all of those thoughts are trees drifting by on the riverbank. Keep your attention here and now. As you lie there, I'd like you to listen to my voice and repeat in your head after me. I relax my feet and my ankles. I relax my feet and my ankles. My feet and my ankles are relaxed. I relax my calves and my thighs. I relax my calves and my thighs. My calves and my thighs are relaxed. and my abdomen. I relax my hips and my abdomen. My hips and my abdomen are relaxed. shoulders are relaxed. I relax my hands and my arms. I relax my hands and my arms. My hands and my arms are relaxed. I relax my neck and my head. I relax my neck and my head. My neck and my head is relaxed. body is relaxed. My body is relaxed. My whole body is completely and utterly relaxed. back towards your fingers and your toes and give them a little wiggle. And start to roll your ankles and your wrists. And 
hands gently move around in the legs. Whenever you're ready, just gently draw your knees up towards your chest. Give yourself a little hug. Just going to start rolling forwards and backwards. And then you naturally bring yourself up to a seated position. So that's the whole class for today. Hope you enjoyed. Practicing with me, and I hope to see you again next time.